Hello and welcome my partners in crime and welcome back to Murder Analyze for another true crime. Unsolved, missing, part of our missing campaign and you ain't going to believe it. This is case 20. We've done it. We've done it. 20 cases in 20 days from the 1st of December to the 20th of December. We're done. I wish I could have done more. And I'll tell you now, it hasn't been easy. It's been really, really difficult to get these cases out. A lot of editing and everything else involved, a lot of research involved. So I'm hoping I've got anything wrong. I'm really sorry. But it has been absolutely terrible to do all these cases in that way. But enlightening and heart-wrenching sometimes to put out these cases because you're constantly reading over material and it's one child after another. One heartache after another that I've been doing for 20 days and to tell the truth I think after this I'm going to have a big glass of red wine and just chill for about two days until I come back with more but anyway today we're on case 20 and we're on the very very sad case and this is Mark Garvery case now he disappeared in 1987 and this is a Liverpool case and now you'll see from um, all the stuff that I'm going to put up that where it is and everything else but it's a, it's a really really sad case this one because he lived with his mum and his stepdad and I think he lived with I think he had three siblings as well and there's a photo of them now listen these people are still waiting for him to come home They're, they just really are it's another one where his family have not given up hope they want this child back now this boy at the time of his disappearance I think he was 15 years old at the time of his disappearance and now there's, I'll tell you what really happened with Mark. It's, it's quite sad, really, because he was having a chat and that with his mum, and, and he, he said to his mum, I'm, um, you've met a new girl, and I'm going to go around this girl's house, and she thought, oh, it, you know, they usually always come back on time. He'd never done anything wrong. This lad, he was a lovely lad, good part of the family, loving family. This is a really great family, this family from Liverpool. Absolutely fantastic. Now, this boy um, usually is back by nine, half past nine, at, t at this time and um so you know she says like you know bye and and really i think that was it like see you later because really who expects and we've said this before is when someone's leaving that you you expect them to be walking back in the door in a few hours you never expect that you're never going to see these people again so this mother is bloody heartbroken so she just sort of said all right see you later off he went now as she said he usually comes back around nine-ish and she thought oh well he's met this new girl so he'd probably babysitting with her and he'll be back a bit later by 12 o'clock he wasn't back she immediately rang the police she knew something was wrong because this is very out of character for this boy to have done anything like that at all anything he was always on time if he said he's going to come back he'd come back and he certainly wouldn't have done this to his mother and the family he just wouldn't have done it he had no reason to do, to run or do anything else or so she fought at the time. But you see, teenagers, as I say, can be very fickle, can't they? And it doesn't usually take a lot to maybe change their personality or change their way of thinking when they're upset over one thing or another. So how what turns out is when, what's happened here is when he's left, he's probably all happy, he's got this new girlfriend, you know, 15-year-old lad, probably loving it. You know, to them, they're in love. It's the love of their life, isn't it? This is how he must have been feeling. He's rushed around there, got the bus, and that's all the money he left with was the return bus fare home. This is before mobile phones and CCTVs and all this stuff. It's before any of that. But he always had enough money for a bus fare and enough money to make that quick phone call home. Or years ago, what we used to do is reverse the charges to my mum. She used to pick up and then come and get us. But... He would have done that if he needed to do it. So he's gone to the girl's house, he's knocked at the door and she's opened the door and then he finds out that his best friend, his best friend is also now in this house. Now this row ensues, things start being said and this boy, Mark, then runs out of the house crying. That's the story. He is seen at the bus stop. Now, he was at the bus stop. I've, I've heard it. I think it was like the uh, Jolly Miller pub and that. But I think his sister says a little bit different. I'll have a look at that in a minute of where he was last seen. He was last seen at a bus stop. Now, if anyone had seen him at this bus stop, and I'll go through that in a minute, um, he would have been in a distressed state. He would have been. Because he was really, really upset. 
because as I said, young love, you know, teenage love, isn't it? It's different. They take it sometimes so seriously. So whether that has made Mark think, I'm not going home, I'm, I'm off, because now he thinks he's been betrayed by his friend and the girl that he loved, even though he'd only met her for a short time, he would have felt betrayed. He was def definitely, you know, upset and distraught over, over that by seeing the best friend in there. And we don't know, do we, really, what was said in that house either. But um, after that, from that bus stop sighting, that was the last time in 1987 that he's ever been seen or heard of, really, since. So sometimes, you know, it doesn't take a lot to make someone go. No matter how much your home is good, kids react to things in different ways. But something upset him that much and it was definitely he wasn't upset when he left the house he was upset when or if he left that house there because since then and we know he left there because he was seen at the bus stop so someone from that bus stop something has happened to mark now whether that's by his choice or by foul play we don't know and that's what we're relying on isn't it people out there now with the internet and everywhere else around People may not have known about this case. People not, may have heard about Mark's story. But now people know it. It's out there. And as I say, if something happened to Mark, or you know of something that happened to Mark, then you should say it. As I said, loyalties change all the time, don't they? And if Mark himself is out there and has decided that day to run away and feels that he no longer can come home after all these years, 34 years, I think, since he vanished. 34 years, very long time to hold guilt of running away or whatever. No one's in any trouble here. If Mark had run away, he's not in any trouble. People just need to know he's safe. They really do. And his family believe that he is still alive and that one day will come up. And maybe that's one of the reasons why he's not coming forward because he feels the guilt of leaving them all this time. But there is no guilt. It's okay to come forward and say something. You don't even have to come home. You just have to ring up missing persons or the police and say, it's me. Give them something that they know it's you by and you can go on your way. If it's for another reason, if there's been any foul play here at all and anyone knows anything about that, please, please, please come forward. This boy was only a very young boy at this time in an absolute, absolutely distraught state at this point of this bus stop. He never rang his mother, he never done anything, but he was at that bus stop to go home, wasn't he? Because why wouldn't he, why would he have been at a bus stop that he would have usually have got? He was going home, so something stopped him from going home, I believe. When Mark was going with this girl, he'd always say, Mum, get me my best trousers and shirt ready to go and that. And so I got them ready on the night he went. And um, it was my little fella's birthday on the day after he went missing. And I was trying to get stuff ready you know, for the party for the day after. And Mark just said, Mum, go now, see you later. And that was the last I seen of him. Mark was always good at letting me know where he was. He was always on time coming home, always, never late. And that nice half nine came and I thought, so he's, he's with that girl, he's probably babysitting or something and fell asleep because he would never been at 12 o'clock. That was it, I just found the police trace away. They went to the girlfriend's house and they said he left half nine to get home. And that was the last we ever seen him. Mark also wanted to go to London, so me and Dennis used to go down to London every weekend, go around all the McDonald's and all that thing, see if he was working there. But I never dreamt it would go on this long. I just. I, I still think I'd know him if I see him, even though he'd be 45, I still think I'd recognise him. I, could, I couldn't, I had to take the kids to school, but I, could, I didn't want to go up the house in case he came. And it, it was just. Um, Nightmare. I, I'd even be standing upstairs looking out the bedroom window and I seen a 
fell over the white coat and what Mark went missing with and I ran off to the top of the road and I'm looking at him. Really thought I'd seen him. <laughs> you, you, you just um, you just look on all the time. I keep thinking that he's probably married to someone who's got kids and he'd probably have a new job because he was saying he wanted to be a solicitor when he got older. <laughs> but he is quite clever. And no matter what's happened, we don't care. You know, just run him back. Everyone misses him. A different way I'll never come back. <laughs> I'm always scared I'm going to die and I'm not going to know so I'm just praying that he comes back before. I say he was that close to me mum and dad and they died so it's... I say there wasn't really a reason for him to go. Listen, the police searched, of course they did. They've done a massive search this boy and it lasted about three months. Because as I said, there was no CCTV, was there? There was nothing like that. We didn't have your bus cams and your car cams and your door cams like we do now. They didn't have any mobile phones. They didn't have any of that. So your only ever reliance is on now witness testimony. And you're talking about it probably, a, a, what, nine o'clock at night, 8.30, 8, 9, between that time, no later than 10, that this would have been going on. It was um, sort of, uh, in an area I think where you, you would have noticed there was a pub close, people would have been coming and going, especially in the 80s, you know, pubs were packed in them days. So someone may have seen something. And it's really, it's for this reason why we do the appeals. As I've said, not everyone, you know, knows about these cases, but a lot of people know about YouTube, a lot of people know about social media, and now social media is like our new way, isn't it, of communicating everything we need you to know. And so if you do now know anything, please, please, please come forward. It's really, really important. I think the police talked to everyone. They questioned all the kids at his school. Um, they searched this Walton Park with tracker dogs and stuff. Uh, they made announcements on loudspeaker because they did that in them days. I remember it going on in them days doing that um, uh, in Goodison. And also I think... Uh, I think Mark was a real fan is it, of Everton FC, so if he is, is still around and that, he probably would have supported still this team because he absolutely loved them. And that's so they, you know, they done announcements. You know, people have really tried here. It's not like no one's been looking. People have been looking, but no information came forward at all, at all. Now Everton uh, uh, FC and you're at Goodison Park. It's packed. And they've made an announcement out to this many people and not no one, no one had any information at all. So really, you know, if we can, it'd be really, really good. But sometimes, you know, it, it's difficult, isn't it? You're asking for information from a very old case. So it would only be really people now that actually knew something from that day that would probably come forward. And that's the people really that I'm appealing to now. That's, that's you. If you knew something on that day and what happened to this lad or where he is or where he is now that's the people really that this is aimed at and if you could come forward with any information at all to give this family a bit of peace it would be really really good now i think his stepdad died in 2019 and his sister promised you know um that she would try everything and do everything to bring this boy home so um let's hope she does let's hope she does so the last sighting of Mark was at the bus stop in West Derby on the night of 1987. It emerged that Mark and this girlfriend had had an argument, my dad said before, after he found her with his best friend. So you can imagine how he would be feeling. This is why I believe that he would be distraught at this bus stop. He would have been, he would have been really upset because they said he had left um, around, well, quite really, very very quick after getting there once he found that out but he left in tears so he was clearly upset about what was going on there at that situation Mark has left and then he walked to get onto the bus in the Jolly um, by the Jolly Miller pub on Queen's Drive now I don't know if that pub I think it's still there actually I think it is be interesting to know if it is so there's a pub near right so if there's a pub there's people 
there's people and it's you that I'm asking to think what was you doing can you remember It'd be really really interesting wouldn't it if anyone come forward with anything really but I mean this has been been put out for years and years and it's up until now there's been nothing with all the searches they've done everything this boy has gone without a trace now I have to say that in this area of Liverpool you have Liverpool docks you know and there is water around there's lots of places around um, and that so something like that could have happened but also this boy loved London he loved London and maybe he thought I've had enough I've had enough of all this best friends piss me off nick my girlfriend I'm off and he's got on or hitchhike in them days as they did to London and as his sister said he may be in London have a great job a family living his life and just doesn't feel that he has the right to come back after all this time um, and wouldn't it be lovely if that's what turned out what it would be what a great ending to the story that would be and it's not that it hasn't happened before it has but usually there's some trace there's some trace of him he could have got anywhere he could have done anything couldn't he but this area of Liverpool uh, of where it is how young this boy was he was clearly um, upset wasn't he? he was clearly upset so it's really really you know I think um, do, I, do I think it's foul play possibly yeah I do I really do because of his youth or it could be that he was so distraught that he decided to do something else. But I agree with the family that he could also be in London living the life of Riley. But if that is the case, then he needs to contact someone and let them know. Because these people have been waiting and waiting and waiting for him. His mother is really, to this day, distraught over this and just wants him home. So I hope there is a clip, and I don't know, I probably would have played that clip by the time I get to this. <laughs> so. But anyway, so listen, this 15 year old boy in 1987, it's just never been seen since. He's gone. Another one. And this brings to the end of our 20 day challenge. These cases that we have tried to bring awareness to people. And these will remain on the channel for as long as possible. Well, I'm not going to take them down and we don't intend to be going anywhere. And so if we don't come out with any results now or over the next few years, maybe in the next few years after that or the few years after that, someone will see something and remember it. That's all we can all hope for, isn't it really? That's as good as we can get, I think. So I want to thank you all for really, really sticking by us on this challenge it's been really really enjoyable to do it it's been eye-opening i think my partners in crime in my members lounge uh, have supported me and text me and and you know sent me cases and i'm so um pleased and that you've done that and appreciate of it i really appreciate everything you do and i'll be back on there behind the scenes now i have time um so you know what to do you can, um, if you want to join Partners in Crime, you can do that. It's um, the links on there. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook. So thanks for all your support throughout this campaign. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. So until the next time, bye-bye.